Scrolling the internet will only get you so far when it comes to dreaming up an interior. Actually, the process can start to become outright overwhelming as you create a near endless list of wants or must-haves for your space. So what other options are there? Let's create a little bit of space here. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And today I wanna to talk about inspiration. It's easy to think that creative-minded people can constantly drum up idea after idea without turning to any outward sources. However, that's generally not the case, and it isn't for me either. So today I want to talk about some of my favorite resources, those that I frequently turn to, to drive and find some new inspiration. I start by disconnecting from the digital world with a good stack of magazines or books. I spend so much time at the computer, whether it's speaking to clients or designing kitchens, that I find disconnecting gives me the chance to open my mind and clear myself of some of that visual clutter. When it comes to the books or magazines I turn to most, it isn't just photo after photo like you find online, but a deep dive into specific projects or materials. I find this can become a journey of sorts, almost story-like as you learn about what a specific designer, architect, or contractor is thinking. Some of my favorite print materials come from my wife's Opa. So every few weeks, he hands me a stack of magazines. They include things like Azure, Canadian Architect, or Wood Design and Building. And they're just a nice source for new information about materials and projects going on around the country. Another common source for me is H.G. Miller's Building Construction Materials and Methods book. Now, this book was my dad's, one that he referenced a ton while he was building the house that I grew up in. It's really where I first was exposed to construction and design several decades ago. This book is filled with black and white drawings of old building methods, including truss design, wall structure, or bracing methods. What I love most is seeing my dad scribbled notes or numbers from different stages of that house build. I think what I find most inspiring about these sources is that they have little to do or nothing to do with kitchen design. Instead, they expose me to everything from new building materials or specific architectural elements to traditional methods of joinery, all of which then spark ideas that can be translated or applied when sitting down to design the next kitchen. Travel has always been another great source of inspiration for me. Now, over the past few years, and with three young children, Long distance travel has become slightly more challenging, so seeing some of those far off places in different cultures hasn't really been quite as accessible. So I've had to find other ways to scratch that itch, and what I've found is turning inward and looking at more localized outings. Nature is a great source to find inspiration, whether it be just to disconnect and let my mind wander, or more tangibly in the form of viewing natural color palettes. We have an unbelievable network of trails and green space here in my city and taking in how different textures work together or how natural color palettes are formed can help form ideas or concepts that are directly applicable to interior design. Second local source I tap into are the numerous construction projects that are going up throughout the city. Now, once again, this has little or nothing to do with kitchen design. It could be the way a high rise used a combination of brick and glass to create a feeling of permanence or history while still giving it a modern touch or an infill home with a particular unique character or facade. Maybe even a historical building with design elements that would only be considered out of date or out of touch nowadays. I'll often walk past the same project at various stages of construction. Each time, each stage will often tell you something new about that particular building. Now, like the stories in those magazines, all these different stages help to build the overall character, or maybe lack thereof, of a particular build. What I also like seeing is how different materials work together and play together, and this often gives me inspiration or ideas that I can then take back to kitchen design. And finally, last but not least, I don't ignore the digital world entirely. I do turn to those common online sources of Hows, Pinterest, or Instagram. And on these platforms, I typically follow my favorite vendors or magazines, uh, trade shows, as well as other designers. And sometimes there is no better source of inspiration than looking at what others are doing in the industry. Like Frank Chimero said, Good design is all about making other designers feel like idiots because the idea wasn't theirs. You never know when another person's design is gonna spark an idea of your own. It could be a simple detail, something like a cabinet front or how a door operates, or something more complex like a natural lighting plan for an overall space. Now, speaking of natural lighting, if you missed last week's video, check it out. It's all about borrowing or stealing natural light from other areas in your home. 
House is a great source for finding inspiration from professional sources, since most of the photos are uploaded by designers or contractors. There's also a great blog that covers pretty well any topic you can imagine. For example, the top trending photos on that platform. You can even spend time in their forum discussing problems or ideas with others as well as professionals. Now, it's starting to sound a bit like an ad for House, which it wasn't. It's just a really good source of information. And then comes Pinterest. And as much as I like scrolling through all the photos just like the next person, I find it just as easy to zone out or ghost out and not really absorb any new inspirational ideas. However, what I really do like Pinterest for is helping to articulate a concept or design to another person. Chances are whatever you're thinking about or whatever you're planning has been done before and you can help pull together a few photos to describe or give visuals to a particular design or element. Well, hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea how I go about finding and fostering new ideas and bringing them back to my own work. Now, ultimately, you're going to have to figure out what works for you and what inspires you and drives your own projects forward. As always, thanks a ton for watching. Thanks for joining me this week. Until next time, bye-bye.